Hello and welcome to the first of hopefully many of my editing videos. Now the weather outside is absolutely atrocious at the moment. So what better excuse do we need than to get in front of the computer and go through some of our photos to edit. Today's video is going to be about how I edit photos whilst keeping the limitations of a micro four thirds sensor in mind. Now there are two main things that I have to contend with in comparison to a full frame sensor and that is a larger depth of field and significantly noisier photos in low light conditions. Now this isn't me saying that I can edit a photo and make it look like it's been produced on a full frame camera and if I did want that then I would simply just go out and buy a full frame system. This is just me going through a few things that I do to reduce noise in a photo and give the impression of a smaller depth of field and a blurrier background. Anyway, enough of my ramblings, let's get on the computer and I'll go through a photo and show you some of the techniques that I use. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom and this is the photo that I will be editing. As you can see, the background isn't overly that blurred. Unfortunately, this beautiful peregrine here was a bit too close to the background for my liking. Um, as you can see, the photo is not perfect. I didn't have a high enough shutter speed, thus a bit of wing blur, but it's a fairly interesting photo as we've got this peregrine coming in with what looks like a very half-eaten pigeon. Um, so let's see what we can do. As you can see there's quite a bit of noise that's been introduced. Uh, we are only at ISO 1600 but it was a very cloudy dark day so that's why you can see quite a lot of the noise. So first things first, I export my photo into DxO Pure Raw 3. So DxO Pure Raw is a denoising program. You can use Topaz, I used to use Topaz, and you can also now use Lightroom's own version of this, and Lightroom's is very good also. But Pure Raw 3, for my eye, is the best bang for your buck. It doesn't remove every single little bit of noise like Topaz does. And I think Topaz can look a little bit plasticky. So I'm going to go for DxO Pure or 3. You can choose between Deep Prime or Deep Prime XD. Um, for this one, I'm using XD. It can cause a few strange artifacts when you've got layered backgrounds. However, for this type of photo, this will be perfect. So I don't apply any extra sharpening to this. So the lens softness is off, but I include all other optical corrections that DxO has to offer. So let's start processing. So here we are, let's zoom in. So I'm not sure if this comes across on your screens, but there's still a little bit of grain that's included, which I like, it stops it from looking too plasticky, too fake and too over-processed, but there we go. I mean, it looks pretty amazing. It is great what we can do with, with software these days. So first, I'm gonna apply a bit of a crop, um, probably two, two by three, maybe a 16 by 10, just because I like how that will complement the photo maybe like that, maybe bring this in a little bit more. Don't want to crop too much because I've only got a 20 megapixel sensor, but don't be afraid of cropping. I think that's probably about right. We can always change. Okay, right, so first things first, we've done the crop. Now we go to just doing generic edits to the photo, so I'll probably bring the exposure up a tad, making sure we don't clip any of the highlights. I tend to bring shadows up 
a bit. We've gone up by 15. And when you do that, bring down the blacks a little bit just to keep the contrast in there. I usually bring down the highlights quite a bit. Bit. As you can see, this is very white, and I think your eye tends to be led to that area. We can do some local edits later, but if we see that's highlights all the way down, let's do minus 66. Again, we'll be doing some local edits to the bird and the background shortly. Um, for everything else, I might take a bit of vibrancy out just because it's very green here. Let's take that out a little bit. What we can do is mess around with the greens and the yellows on these sliders, but for now, I'm going to leave it just to keep this as simple as possible. So, local edit's done. Let's have a quick look. That's what it was. That's what it is now, just a little bit brighter. So, we'll go into our masking. Now Lightroom has got some lovely masking tools. It used to just have brush, linear gradient and radial gradient but now you can click on subject it will try and detect the subject that you want to mask and let's see how it does. Yeah pretty damn well. It's not always perfect as I can zoom in and you can see here and a bit here it's missed but for these purposes, it's absolutely fine. If you really wanted to, you can subtract from the mask, go in with a brush and be careful and take out all of this. But for now, just to keep it simple, we'll leave it like that. And then the first thing I always do, as soon as I've got my subject masked, these three dots, and then you press duplicate and invert mask. And then what that means is you've now got one mask everything in red is what's masked at the moment so you've got one mask for the background and another mask for the bird so let's work on the background first again please just ignore any of this sloppy these sloppy masks here so you've got two choices you can either really brighten the background or darken the background for me I like dark backgrounds. The key is not to overdo it here because it can cause your photo to look fake when there's such a big difference between the background and the subject. And as you can see it starts to showcase some of the issues if you've got some sloppy masking. So subtlety is key to this whole process. Back to normal. Let's take it down probably two or three. That looks good to me. So that's minus 0.3. What you can do is reduce the contrast. So that sort of brings the blacks and the whites closer to the middle of your histogram. So you've got darks down here, lights up here. It pushes everything into the middle. So we've done that. I usually heavily decrease the highlights because eyes are drawn to highlights and we want to draw all of the attention onto this bird. Um, maybe boost the shadows a little bit but for this time I'm not going to reduce the blacks as we don't want the contrast in the back. Then to try and deal with these colours that are coming up reduce the saturation slightly so if you can see you can go way too much with it that just looks unnatural. If you don't know quite what you're doing, just go all the way to one side and then slowly bring it up until it starts to look natural but a little bit faded. So that might be too much. Let's have a look. Minus 20. You can use these little eye icons on all of these tabs to see what's happened with those changes. So to me, that looks pretty good. So that's these main sliders dealt with. Then we go down to the effects tab. So we've got texture, clarity, and dehaze. So texture, as you'd expect, artificially increases the textured look of a photo. So if you can increase it, you can see it starts to look pretty horrible. If you decrease it, it looks 
pretty fake. So, again, subtlety is key. I usually bring it down to about minus 10. You might not be able to see what difference it makes on your screens. It's quite subtle, but every little helps. Again, clarity. Way too much. Looks horrible and blurred and fake. So, and then if you go too much, that's the other way. I tend to bring that down probably about 10 as well. We'll have a look to see if that's overdone it. Not at all. Then the dehaze. So this, as you'd expect, is usually used for hazy photos. And if you want to bring back some detail, look at that. Horrible, horrible, horrible. What we want to do is the same as we've done with the last bring it down slightly. This one can be quite aggressive, so let's go to minus five. And then I don't deal with any of these detail sliders for for this purpose because it just, the sharpness and the noise sliders just make things look a little bit fake with the background. If you just completely take down the sharpness, it can just look a bit too clinically and digitally affected, which is not what we're trying to achieve. So let's have a look. That's where we were at. That's where we're at now. I think I might tone it down a little bit more. Up one, up one. Now, if you think you've gone too far, what we've got here is a global adjustment for the mask that you've just done. So it's essentially the intensity of the mask and the changes you've applied to that. So you can put it all the way up to 200 and essentially doubles all of the effects that you've just done. But for this purpose, you're probably better off overdoing it with the mask and then bringing this back down. So let's have a look. Before after hopefully you can see that the attention has moved away from all of this messy background and hopefully onto the bird and speaking of the bird let's do some work on you so maybe bring it up a tad on the exposure so 0 0.1 contrast is key your eye is drawn to contrast as well so, 20 looks fine by me. Before, again, you can keep keep checking the changes that you've made by using these eye icons. Very subtle, but that's what you want. Highlights, I usually, as I said before, bring them down, although I might have already sorted that with my global adjustments earlier. So just down by five. Shadows, I usually move up. Let's just put it to 11, but then if you bring the shadows up, always try and remember to bring the blacks down slightly as well, because then you get to keep the contrast in the adjustments. So that's looking all right to me. Let's have a quick look, see what the changes we've made have done. Probably fair, yeah, a very slight difference, but that is sort of the aim of this. You don't want it to look like it's over-processed. And I see a lot of people where you can quite evidently tell what they've tried to do to an image. Again, this is not a perfect photo. Look at, look at that wing blur. It's not what I wanted, but you know, we move on. So that's already looking pretty damn good to me. Other thing you can do is to create some depth of field. If the background is particularly cold in temperature, so we're talking this slider here from blue to yellow, you can increase the temperature on the bird slightly. That's way too much. Maybe five on the yellow. And then we're pretty much there, to be honest. Remember to remove chromatic aberration. That can be an issue when you're shooting a bright bird. And then if you think you need sharpening, which to be honest, I don't think we do. Again, people overdo this all the time. 
a little bit of sharpening and then let's zoom out so you can see this if you hold down the alt button while you're sliding the masking slider this strange screen comes up and basically everything in white is what's going to be sharpened so you just slide that up until it's pretty much just your subject and then none of this background has been sharpened just the bird so this is what happens when we overdo it just looks horrible and grainy and look at these horrible little artifacts so bring that right down right down probably I mean 15 will do for this I like to push the radius all the way up and we're probably about there I could do lots of different things bringing down these whites here a little bit but it looks all right and if you want a final touch grab a little brush zoom in on the eye grab the catch light in the eye again subtlety is key but bring that up slightly let's have a look yeah that looks good to me and then there you have it I'll show you before that's all we had before and after hopefully you see exactly what I mean look it's not a full frame photo it's not an F4 full frame photo but from that your eye is drawn to specifically this patch a lot of these white areas to that this is the first thing you're gonna see so there you go I hope that has been of some use to you I'm hoping to bring out quite a few of these editing videos as the year goes on do let me know if you enjoyed it and if there's any other type of editing that you'd be interested in then let me know in the comments thank you very much for watching and i'll catch you on the next one cheers <laughs>